All right, all right, all right. Well, if you aren't tired of the messy notation yet, then you definitely might be after this question. Uh, fun result, sure, but uh, it definitely takes the uh, summary of this chapter with the messiness. So the statement is, confirm that the energy in the TEMN mode travels at group velocity. Okay, hint, find the time average pointing vector and the energy density. Use problem 9.12 if you wish. Uh, again, finding the product of stuff. Integrate over all this cross section of the waveguide to get the energy per unit time per unit length carried by the wave and take their ratio. Oh boy. All right, let's dive in. What we need to know is the monochromatic plane wave in a tube. We've seen those before. Solutions, uh, solution components to the TEMN mode conditions. E naught equals zero. That's part of being TE wave. And then we see that B naught Z is equal to uh, a uh, linear combination of the cosines. Uh, again, solving things through. Uh, no big surprise there. Everything else is definitely a mess, and we have to make appropriate substitutions. So let's be very careful with that. Solution. A couple things to start. We saw that the guided waves we need need it to include longitudinal components in a waveform. Hence, Maxwell's equations were modified and we solve for x and y component for each. For a TE wave and a rectangular waveguide, we have z, component, z components enlisted above. The goal here is to show that the energy per unit length over the energy per, or energy per unit time over the energy per unit length, or, so the integral uh, average s over average u, is equal to the group velocity which is equal to C times the square root of 1 minus omega mn over omega uh, squared. Using a previous result, uh, we have that the average value of fj is equal to 1 half real uh, f tilde times f or g tilde star. We can get this done quickly with s equal 1 over mu e cross b and u equal 1 half e one half epsilon e squared plus one over u naught b squared with the fields above. Okay, everything that we listed in the no will be utilized. All right, so let's start with the pointing vector. It's one over mu uh, with the e cross b, and so we see that that's equal to the real part of e cross the imaginary or complex conjugate of b, and u is equal to one half epsilon naught e dot e, since the squares are represented as dot products. So we see that the uh, average value is one half of the e uh, multiplied with the complex conjugate and b with their complex conjugate. All right, so plugging in the TE mode conditions, we see that, all right, well, we have e star is equal to e naught star xy, e to the negative i kz minus omega t. Similarly, with the b naught uh, or b with the negative i, so if we have this, then um, we can quickly find from our start the e not, e not x term. Again, e not zero is zero here, and we know what b not is, or b not z, so we can plug those in. Careful substitutions, of course. Um, let's just go ahead and chug away and find out what we can. Then we see the same thing for E not y things cancel and then negative signs cancel. B not x and b not y accordingly. Um, okay, so why did we do all that? Well, we need the components in order to take the curls and the dot products. So for the pointing vector, what we have is um, e not x, e not y, and zero for the e field, and then the uh, e the exponent is positive on this side. Taking a cross product with b not x star, b not y star, b not uh, z star, and then the uh, exponential is negative. So if we add, if we multiply them together and we add their arguments, they cancel. So you get e to the zero, which is one. Boom, we like it. Bye bye. Um, okay, so then now we know that the curl, or excuse me, curl, the cross product. We're not actually curling. The cross product uh, gives us uh, what we see in the next line. So we know we need to multiply e not y with the complex conjugate of b not z, 
and then E not X with the complex conjugate B not Z and E not X B not Y complex minus E not Y B not Y X complex. Okay, we see it right now. Okay, so the X and Y components have only imaginary parts, so focus the effort on the Z component. Okay, have only imaginary. Uh, did I miss something? Yes, E not. Okay, yep, yep, okay. Uh, yes, because BZ is um, is not imaginary, so we're good there. Uh, okay, so cool. So what we have here is E not X, B not Y star. We need to multiply them together. The complex conjugate leaves us with a lot of negatives to cancel out. And um, oops. And so uh, push that through. Pretty easy to deal with, I would say. Uh, simplify it down, and we see that we get S, oops, is equal to this monster here. Um, quick note, I did not carry the constants that were on each part of the um, bracket terms when we found E not X, B not Y, E not Y, B not X. Uh, but those do exist, and uh, we'll see it in the integral step, so it must have been a copy-paste error. But with that, we have this uh, average value here, and we need to note that the dA in this case is equal to dx dy z hat, which is bounded from 0 to a and 0 to b for zero to a, or for x and y, respectively. Okay, so now that we can ship all these uh, constants out front, what we see is that we have 1 over 2 mu naught uh, for the integral sake. We have omega k pi squared mu naught squared over one over omega c squared minus k squared all of that squared and then we have n over b squared times the integral of zero to b sine squared dy zero to a cosine squared dx and then similarly for m over a squared cosine squared and so on and so forth okay very messy you have two components or split the integral up in two parts for the addition sign there whatever we see here that after the fact, we have a n over b squared times b over 2 times a over 2 from the squared components of the sine and cosines. And then for the m over a, we have another b over 2 and a over 2. And we need to consolidate this down. All right. So what this tells us is that we have an a factor of a over b that need to be factored out. We put that in the numerator now. And 2 over 2 is another common or uh, 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 gives us 1 over 4. Another common factor. Factor that out, and that's where we get the 1 over 8 mu. Uh, everything else is good to go, and we just get the m over a squared plus n over b squared. Good to go there. Now we need to do the same thing for the energy. Hopefully I remember the uh, uh, the constants this time. It looks like I did. Uh, yeah, but be very, very careful in how we simplify everything, of course. The dot products yield something pretty easy to deal with, I would say. So I'm not going to show all the uh, gory details on that. Um, pretty easy to see that the uh, components cancel with that um, complex conjugate. So really no big deal in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, uh, then we have to do the... So we see that the um, electric terms go in the first bracket and the magnetic terms go in the second bracket. Uh, and this time I use curly brackets. And you can see that emphasized with the 1 over 4 mu naught. Because, uh, of course, the magnetic part has to just be, uh, well, complex and, you know, pain in the butt. Uh, so with that, uh, you see that everything has a factor of AB over 4, which we found from the integrals, like we did last time. Factor all of that out. You have the electric component to start, plus the magnetic component in the second half of that box. It's just a long question. Uh, I'll let you divvy it up if you wish. But now we need to simplify these before we take their ratio. So if we see that k over is equal to 1 over c, square root omega squared minus omega squared mn, then we see that kc squared is equal to, well, it, omega squared minus omega mn squared. Solve this for omega mn. And uh, chug it on through, divide by c. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do all that stuff. And noting that C squared is equal to epsilon naught, oh, 1 over epsilon naught mu naught. And omega mn is equal to all of that stuff that we had. Uh, to do, to do. 
we see that uh, for the TEM mode, TE subscript MN mode, we see that we have omega squared MN over C squared pi squared um, is equal to M over A squared plus N over B squared. So now that we have uh, this set up here, uh, we can go ahead and simplify down quite a bit. Um, so for the um, for the integral of the pointing vector, we have the M over A and then N over B both squared. So we can put in the blue term there, which is omega squared MN and C squared pi squared. Uh, good to go there. What we see is that we have omega squared over C squared minus K squared in the denominator, which we can simplify to the omega squared MN over C squared, and we color coded that to red. You see from that, we can cancel a C squared and a omega squared MN from the red and the blue, and we can simplify that pretty quickly. Oh, and the pi squareds from what was there in the coefficients or uh, constants. So what we see is that the integral is simplified for the pointing vector to omega k b naught squared abc squared uh, over 8 mu naught omega squared mn. All right, similarly, we can uh, reduce the uh, energy density, and we see the same cancellations for both the electric and the magnetic parts. We have to be a little careful since we have that b naught over 4 uh, omega, or not omega, mu naught part chilling with that uh, uh, magnetic part. Uh, other than that, we are uh, looking pretty solid. We're gonna continue to simplify that, mag or not the magnetic, the uh, energy density before we take the ratio. Uh, you see, I'm um, using some more color coordination here, and uh, we're gonna combine these now. Uh, pretty straightforward, I would say. Simplify them down, we didn't change anything. Uh, too much. We just put the C's into the whenever you divide it by fraction multiplied by the reciprocal. So we put everything in the numerator that needs to be in the numerator. Um, yeah, I would say that's pretty much the same. Now, what's to note here is that in the electric part, we don't have a K uh, squared, but we have a C squared. And in the magnetic part, we have a K squared and a C squared. Okay. So in the electric part, uh, we substitute in the fact that we have a uh, C squared for one over uh, epsilon naught mu naught, so the epsilon naughts and the electric part cancel. Good to go there. And then in the uh, K squared C squared, we substitute in omega squared minus omega MN squared, again, color coordinated. So you see, after we do that, we divvy up the omega MN, MN squared, that second uh, parenthesis that's purple, <clears throat> and we see that after that, we simplify that fraction down and we get a cancellation inside. So what we're actually able to do with all these simplifications is a wander it down pretty nice, I would say. Um, so yeah, we have two, it looks like, yeah, we have two fractions of the same thing, one over four pi or four mu naught, omega squared b naught squared over omega squared mn. Uh, and then 4 times 4 is 16, but then we have a fraction or a 2 in the numerator, so that reduces to 8. And then uh, oh, quite wonderfully, if we take the ratio of the pointing vector with the energy density, uh, those denominators cancel quite lovely. Uh, so then we see that we have a frac or a, an omega canceling with the factor in the denominator. We have an AB uh, times B naught squared canceling. And so all of this leaves us with k c squared over omega. And if we plug in what uh, k c is, then we're left with c over omega, which is uh, times square root of omega squared minus uh, omega uh, squared mn, which is exactly equal to vg. Holy cow, what a nice result. What a messy computation, but a very nice result.